everybody's having uh, an awesome time. I hope everybody's having some time off and uh, getting rested and refreshed in this holiday season. So this is 50 pips, 29th of December, 2013th. Not making any trade calls or recommendations as you and only you are responsible for the trades you may decide to take. The fact that you're listening to this means you've read, you understand, you accept all the disclosures, disclaimers on the blog and understand that we're here just performing some technical analysis for learning purposes for educational purposes only so guys i wasn't going to do an update initially i'd even just uh, tweeted out the old outlook just saying that there was no change but again i just thought it was a bit of a cop out and since i was popping in front of the screens to have a look at the charts i just thought i'd do a little update again not a lot has changed uh I haven't been looking at the charts at all. I've just stopped by, I've opened up the platforms and I just looked at some emails. So I'm just gonna go a quick rundown just to uh, just to go through what I'm looking at just the same ways I'd be popping into the office just to look at some charts, right? And then sharing it with you. Uh, just a reminder again, you know, where market's pretty much dead, it's chop zone, low liquidity time. Um, very easy to get into trouble if you don't know what you're doing or if you're trying to get lucky in this kind of market. There's very little edge. Um, I'll be in the office tomorrow, so I'll be, I'm not sure if I'll be trading, but I'll be in the office tomorrow. Then that's the 30th, then essentially 31st, pretty much dead day, then first and second again. Uh, first dead day, second. Most people will start to look at charts. People will be coming back to the office, but it, we won't get the full liquidity coming back until the 6th, uh, 6th of January, okay? I think the Thursday could be interesting. At least it's going to be a full day work for me, but I think the second could be interesting because, you know, we might get some kind of liquidity coming in, but also in the lower liquidity, we have all the PMIs coming out. So uh, in Europe and um, UK and US. So it could be interesting also because maybe the slightly lower liquidity could have an impact if we get any kind of decent data out. So if you're making a mental note for this week, I'd say, you know, tomorrow you can pop around. But Thursday might be an interesting day to be in the office, right? Um, on gold, what's happening on gold? Nothing much, right? We talked about this range at these lows and we said that it would be we'd expect over the holiday to see a uh, heavy to sideways chop uh, around this area but the fact that it couldn't break down below and get a daily close below that 1200 on the second day would would give us a feeling that we might need to grind back up higher into those 1226s so really no change i really encourage if you haven't done so if you're a new uh a su subscriber or follower to, to take a look at the outlook we did last week because we went into it in a bit more detail so not a lot um not a lot changed but here is just chopping around 1250 to the upside 1150 to the downside and 1200 mid-range so sideways chop maybe a bit of grind higher but again not not a lot going on uh, what's going on the ES? Well, on the ES, again, very nice action. Again, in a slow market chop, what we said, we're looking for um, this to continue to stay bid. We're looking for a healthy retracement into the 50 back. We got that retracement back into the 50 back. And what we said is in this kind of market, you'd most likely expect to see sideways chop to grind higher until the end of the year. A lot of people thinking they're just going to flip short, tight stop and come back in uh, 2014 and uh, and caught the top. It's, it's not that easy, right? And again, very classic action. We suspect to grind higher throughout this whole last week of the year and what we said in the last outlook if memory serves me is that after um 1812 I, there wasn't a lot until those 1840s and especially in this kind of market it could get choppy but um we didn't have much into uh, up into those uh, 40s and that's where we're we're heading right so um still completely in the range we expect to see in this kind of market you know if we start to get uh hold above uh, 1843 this could really start to cause some damage damage uh, next level we got to the upside 1874 but for now i'm just looking at exactly like we discussed last time 1843 to the upside 1780s to the downside with that 1800 is pivotal but again um behaving exactly the same way uh, way we expected it to behave and again if you were long off those 50s i would have definitely uh you know had um orders to take take profit on those grind hires throughout the holiday season another one a lot of people were asking me about just doing a briefly one on crude no real change on crude we finally got a move back into that 100 so a lot of people will probably uh, have taken advantage to take some off there uh, we discussed this This is a weekly and we were talking about this for a long time a lot of people getting really bearish at these lows and we had some bearish action and what we kept on saying is 
all we know is it's heavy into support this is a weekly 100 moving average 200 moving average we expect it to base we got the confluence with this trend line a lot of people getting very excited on this break below the 9250s we said really before we get any kind of bearishness at lows as continuation of the move down we need to see a weekly close below this 200 moving average and below this tight chop range that was holding here so bam we got the close uh, above very bullish for us especially above that 100 for us it was a uh, high odds trade back into the 100 that's exactly where we're trading so now going into the year uh, what I'd be looking at is so the high odds, the, the, the primary trade back into the 100 is done and dusted. Right now, this 100 being pivotal for a move back down into 9670s, uh, 9660s, the downside, that trend line coming up. And a lot of people are probably going to be looking to the upside at this uh, 50 back of this move coming in at 10190s into the 104, basically this whole support zone, sorry, resistance zone to the upside with this 50 back. And that's probably the, the area to keep an eye out for in terms of uh, two resistance points to the upside I'd have this uh, 101 90 and 104 30s but again in this kind of configuration we're looking this at possibly being a structural swing low there for a move back into the 110s and higher okay uh, what else we got CAD we discussed CAD and we said you know clearly is having a lot of trouble holding above the 107 we kept on saying 107 heads up at 107 uh, 107 equally a lot of trouble holding below the 106 so before going off on this week off pretty much what we said is do not get confused by velocity of move inside range you hear me say this a lot there's reason because what you have to identify is what the key levels are what the key levels are and they're 107 106 as we said unless we get a daily close outside these levels sideways chop you do not this is not kind of market you want to get caught buying highs or selling lows when the market is failing to close outside these levels and you see bam back down all the way back into 106s back down all the way into 107 so again just get, here we're closing outside uh it's going to be interesting to see how we react today but again this is a massive chop zone but if we keep on holding above 107 probably not a good idea to stay stubbornly short if we close below 106s probably not a good idea to stay stubbornly uh, long uh, again keeping up we discussed it a bit more in the um, in the um, in the past outlook uh, what else we got on kiwi kiwi not a lot's going on this is a base support um, not something I'd be particularly interested in participating in but this is a very important support you've got a confluence with that 200 on the daily you've got that 50 back both of them weak they've been pierced violated a lot of times so it's not something I'd be looking at clearly pressure is on but you have to respect the support that's here uh, what else do we got on this USD JPY what we said is the levels to watch was that breakup of the 0310s and that this was holding a bid tone we, we'd expect this to say sideways chop or grind higher causing more pain throughout the holiday period for a move back into 107s and higher that hasn't changed we've been long for those high for those um, area for for a long time now um, you've seen this past week basically very nice action very classical hol holiday action path of least resistance pain trade continuing bam keeps on taking stops up to the upside so no real change of outlook here keep in mind how we behave um, above this uh, whole you know what is it 104 50s that we broke above as long as daily keeps on closing above there this should be in grind higher mode again very little edge trying to trade in this kind of market uh, euro gpb uh, we discussed this again many times 140 90s the only level that mattered unless we close back below there we said sideways chop to grind higher path of least resistance grind higher we're looking for a move back into 149s uh, nothing's changed it's doing what we expected it to do in this in this uh, thin market but again don't read too much into these moves because of a thin market aussie what's going on in aussie uh we discussed about the failure to hold below these uh 80 40s 
that this could signify a move to try and rotate back up into the 090. And right here, we've had chops. So, you know, path of least resistance, you know, we've been weak. So, um, the pain, you know, trying to catch a lot of stops out is probably gapping down, trying to take these lows out. You see, it isn't managing to do so. So, all you want to do is, you know, we're still stuck inside this zone we discussed, right? So, unless we get daily closes outside this area, it's going to be very difficult to see a more Momo. We had the two yellow dots indicating this. But again, as long if we don't click, velocity of range inside this chop zone, don't get confused by that. It doesn't mean a lot you need to see daily closes right now the market is just fishing for stops and low liquidity okay uh what else do we got um euro and cable euro and cable oh um GPBNZD, we discussed this chart. We said this was very interesting, the action around the twos, and that this could be the start of a very interesting structural move for a very aggressive grind higher. Um, again, you know, we discussed this, um, I think, on Twitter, too, or in one of the lives. So, you know, very little edge trying to go away with stops above those highs on the weekly and think they're going to hold. You know, they got taken out. Now, it may reverse back down, but very little edge trying to get into those big swing, high swing, low trades um, over the holidays season because the thin liquidity is just asking to get stopped out right but again it's all about that uh, two mark uh, we still think this ultimately should resolve itself to the upside very very interesting we keep on holding above these highs here um, rotation higher in play as we discussed in the past uh, euro and cable what's going on on euro so again euro um, just takes out some stops to the upside in um, in the slow market chop a very very classic sideways chop to grind higher um, not surprised at all what did we say before going away we said this is a massive chop zone right unless you get a close outside this range here you can't read too much into it you have to respect the support market will probably try and take a stab at both these sides right at those recent highs and those lows but to the bear side unless we close daily below the 3600 sideways to grind higher is what we expected just holding bam took out some stops again very normal move in this kind of market you know not nothing to be surprised about no matter you know 100 200 pip moves it doesn't matter and the thin liquidity is just uh, relatively easy to see these kind of moves but you see equally what happens we pressed above and we could get no traction we could attract no new buyers at high we're right back down in the middle of the range holding still slight bid tone no change in outlook sideways chop to grind higher until the vols come back in until the data starts hitting the wires again and then you know we'll be sighting now keep in mind a lot of people will start to talk about the January effect in euro etc etc that a lot of times euro will put in a, a, a high or low of the year in January right or at least for the first part of the year and the way we're trading obviously you know the candidate is more for it to be some kind of a high rather than a massive swing low right if you're looking at the range even on a weekly on euro okay so that's what most people will be talking about and that's what the bears will be hanging on to uh, we'll discuss that in, in the weeks to come it's very early uh, to, to start to uh, you know fantasize or call swing highs or swing lows uh, clearly there's a possibility of that happening we'll be watching like a hawk as usual and the moves are in play right the move is all this grind higher to try and take stab into the 140 141s um, let's see what happens right now much to do about nothing just very classic action um, cable similar um, actually let me get on that four hour what we discussed about was that it was 163.50 162.50 that's the support zone to hold the grind higher don't get confused about velocity of move inside that range or unless we close back below the 62.50s we remained sideways chopped to grind higher unless we had a daily close below the 62.50 bam couldn't close came back down but that 163.50 support was holding so what did we set throughout the holiday we expect sideways chop to grind higher try and take stops out to the upside bam that's what happened right now 64.50s this previous resistance is acting as support again i wouldn't read too much into it but clearly in terms of technically if we can't get back below the 62.50s expect price to continue to rotate uh right back up to those levels we have been uh 
uh, talking about for quite some time. Those are the 166 levels. If we start to close back below 64.50, then sideways chop to move back into those 63.50s. Okay, guys. So again, you know, nothing spectacular happening, but I think it's interesting. Always interesting to do a bit of an update. I didn't want to do cop out by not doing a um, a video. I know a lot of people look forward to these. Again, if you like the content, don't be shy about sharing it. Uh, whatever retweeting or signing up for the updates on the blog or here uh, reminders always a lot of people ask me about the definition there's a little wheel to the right hand side of the screen down on uh, on YouTube and you can just click these are recorded on super high definition so as long as your computer or your internet connection allows for that you can stream these at super high quality depth so it shouldn't be a problem have a great uh, week uh, I'll have plenty of time to wish you guys happy new year and see you guys tomorrow around on Twitter okay have a great one take care guys Thank you.